when Jeff, Jeff asked me to come along, he said, I think because um, one of my hobby horses is obviously local government and local elections because it's where, it's where I came from, you see, but, you know, being a councillor for a long time. And so I do talk about local government and local elections a lot. Um, and Jeff said, oh, well, you know, can you come and talk about Europe? So I, I, so I thought, that would make a change for me, wouldn't it, Jeff? Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it was actually, it was great when Jeff said that, because I thought, well, you know what? Because it'll give us the opportunity to remember and to focus and to think about why we all joined UKIP in the first place. Um, because we all share, don't we, those same core beliefs and principles. So I, I thought, yes, actually, it, it'll make a nice change for me to talk about why I first joined UKIP and why I still feel so passionately about UKIP. And today I've had a really interesting day today. I've been, um, I've been driving around, well actually I've been driven around by Linda Ruffley, the press officer actually, meeting the first lot of um, reporters and things like that, news reporters, um, that we're, I've got to meet all of them running up to the uh, European election. And I met the first lot today and I have to say, I covered every single one in Cheshire today and without exception, and I was really quite blown away, the response we had and the welcoming we had was so overwhelmingly positive, I, I, it really, really did blow me away and it really sort of made me excited for the uh, elections next year because what the, we were talking about several things but one thing that came up was something that you would have seen on the news this morning, that everyone would have seen on the news this morning, about the cigarette packaging. Did you all see it, about the plain cigarette packaging? Mm -hmm. um, and we were asked about that because Paul Nuttall put out a press release about the plain packaging on the cigarettes. And one of the things I was asked was, well, surely this is a fantastic thing, isn't it? Plain packaging for cigarettes. Surely it's a really positive thing. Um, you know, influenced by Europe, surely this is a really positive thing. And it was really interesting for us to turn the whole discussion and whole debate on its head because when the really large tobacco companies were lobbying the European Commission a little while ago um, to ban e-cigarettes, can you remember that? A few months ago they wanted to ban e-cigarettes. And all the big tobacco companies sent all their lobbyists to Brussels and they were lobbying, lobbying our MEPs, including UKIP MEPs, one of them being our deputy leader, Paul Nuttall. And when the discussion about plain paper packaging on the cigarette packets came up, and Paul said to one of the, uh, the principal lobbyists from uh, one of the uh, tobacco companies, well, this is awful, isn't it? I mean, if you, you know, you're, you're going to think that's a real backward step. And they turned to Paul and they said, are you joking? We think that is fantastic. It closes the market. There'll be no new products in the tobacco market after they have brought that legislation through full stop. They are literally holding now that market to ransom and the tobacco companies are absolutely thrilled. The Liberal left are very pleased because they think they've done something wonderful for, for, for health issues and the government are jumping on the bandwagon, aren't they? And all along, what's actually happened is we've once again bowed down to big business, haven't we? You know, the European <laughs> Union bows down to big business all the time and we've done exactly the same thing. And from something that was meant to be such a fantastic thing to start with, health issues, trying to dissuade young people from taking up smoking, what they've actually done is created a market now where those established tobacco companies have now, to all intents and purposes, got a monopoly on that product. No free market and no new companies can <coughs> enter that marketplace whatsoever. And um, I th I'm sure the European Union will be very, very pleased with themselves um, with, with, with that little bit of legislation. Um, because... <coughs> It's actually lobbyists, I think, that we, we, that we all know, to our mind now, that are actually running the show, I think. We all know, anybody who's interested in the workings in the European Union, know that the Commission has so many, over 4,000 lobbyists um, sit uh, and, and lobby those 27 commissioners. And what they say actually goes, doesn't it? Because we know that big business are pulling the strings of the European 
commission. And in a way, what that has created for us here in Britain is we now have a proxy government, don't we? Because our government is no longer a government who rules and makes decisions. We have a proxy government. They just sit there and basically deal out the legislation and the laws which they are told that comes directly down from Brussels and that proxy government sits um, in Westminster pretending to have this veneer of um, democratic choice uh, and freedom. When, when I think all of us in UKIP, I think that probably the reason we were all drawn, drawn, uh, drawn to UKIP in the first place is we realise that actually it's those democratic rights and freedoms that have actually been taken away from us. Um, and that is why I joined. And it all comes back to business, actually. David and I had a really interesting discussion about business a couple of weekends ago, didn't we, David? Um, because that, I remember very vividly the first year I joined UKIP. It's because I'd been reading about a business lady in Cheadle, a place near to Congleton in Cheshire. And she's a businesswoman, and she's a woman who started her own business. It was a tabletop business, started from her kitchen. She was a woman who was an entrepreneur, she wanted to put in the hard work, and so what she did was create a jam. Her name was Clippy McKenna, and what Clippy McKenna did was create a really rather fantastic jam. Um, in fact, it was so good that after 12 months or so, she actually started to sell this jam to places like Fortnum and Mason and Harrods. You know, it was a really unique product. And she started to employ people. In fact, she became a small business employer, an SME, in the area where I live. And then a letter drops on the doormat for Clippy McKenna, and it's from the European Union, it's from, the, uh, from Brussels, from Parliament. And it's telling her that she cannot sell her product anymore because her product is not a jam. There's too much fruit in it to be a jam. So instead, she relabels it and calls it a preserve because hence then she's not going to fall foul of the legislation and a little while later Clippy McKenna receives a second letter from the European Union and this time it cannot be called a preserve because it has too much sugar in it to be a preserve so Clippy McKenna is left with her small workforce a business that she has built from scratch from her house, from her kitchen tabletop, <coughs> supplying some of the top stores in this country and she has now been prevented from trading as a business. She can't call her product a jam, she can't call her product a preserve, so what on earth do you put on a label to sell to your customers if you are being prohibited from doing that by ridiculous legislation and red tape sent down via the European Union. And that to me was one of that, when I read that article, <coughs> when I investigated what had happened to that woman, that is one of the reasons I went along to my first UKIP meeting, excuse me, UKIP meeting, and heard Paul Nuttall and Fred McGlade talk um, very passionately about why they had joined UKIP. And for me, it was, it was quite an epiphany, quite a moment, really, because what I feel the European Union does is it, it strangles everything, doesn't it? It's, it? And again, this is what David and I have been talking about. The legislation and the red tape, it strangles business. It strangles people who are in, innovative and creative. It strangles SMEs in this country. So it, it, it kills business. And that's what it's doing and it's continuing to do. Um, and, it's a, and it's a very serious position that we find ourselves in because we know, and I think any SME and anybody who is in business knows that when we hear that lie banded about regularly that if we leave the European Union three million jobs will be lost we, we know that's a complete fabrication we know that that's a lie but of course three million jobs will not be lost because the European Union what it stands for at the moment, and what we want it to stand for, what we want to think about is trade, isn't it? It's all about trade. Now, considering that Germany export to the UK more cars than any other country in the world, including the USA, I would hazard a guess that Germany will not put any barriers 
on us buying their BMWs or their Volkswagens. Now that's just a guess. I, I'm, I'm sure that will not happen because I, I dare say the, uh, the the corporate bodies at BMW and Volkswagen will be exceptionally cross. <coughs> So of course trade barriers are not going to be put in our way. Of course we should be allowed to trade with our European Union neighbours. Of course we should. But what that trade shouldn't bring with it is political union and fiscal union. And a union where they want to merge our security forces and merge our police force. That is something that we don't want. Because that is something that we, through our democratic, free choice, we should be able to use our vote to vote for those things ourselves in our government and through Westminster. Wouldn't it be great if we had our own seat back on the, on the WTO, on the World <coughs> Trade Organization? We could do that if we weren't a member of the European Union. If we traded through EFTA, then we would have the ability to sit at that top table <coughs> and, and regain that seat at that top table that at the moment is taken by the European Union. We would have our own seat back. And that's the kind of thing that we're saying to people, that we are good Europeans, we are good neighbours. What we want is trade. What we want is to live in harmony. We respect your culture, our, all our cultural differences. You should respect ours. You should respect our sovereignty. And I think that's ultimately why we chose UK. I'm sure that none of you in this room are any different than I. Um, we care very much about democracy. We care that our vote, when we go into that ballot box, we put the cross against the person we want to vote for because we want that person to represent us and represent our views in Westminster. We are trusting that person to do what is right for us. And we're at a very special crossroads at the moment because I think for the first time ever, people know that if they go into a ballot box and they vote for a UKIP candidate, then very likely they're going to get a UKIP councillor. They will almost definitely get a UKIP MEP. And let's hope in 2015 that is going the same will follow on. They will then get a UKIP member of parliament. And I think that penny has now begun to drop that people realise now that no more can they say a vote for UKIP is a wasted vote. A vote for UKIP is now a vote for democratic freedom and for choice. And that is something that we've had taken away from us. And that's something that we are giving back to the British people. So I completely and utterly reject the lies that are spread about us by the Lib Lab Con. Absolutely, utterly. When I was asked today in, my, in the interviews about the ridiculous old notion, can you remember when we were all, when we used to be called the, B, the BMP and Blazers? Can you remember that? All those kind of the nonsense about <laughs> being racist. You know, it's so easy now to bat away those things. And you know what? I, I actually, I had five interviews and only two journalists asked me about that, which actually is really moving in the right direction. You know, we don't have to stand and defend ourselves against those things now. But what we have to do is be professional. Because we've moved on. We have to now show that we are a professional, political organisation. That is really, really important. Because then when they see that we're a professional organisation, we can start talking about the things that really matter to us. We can start talking about things that are important to us in a domestic political agenda. And leading up to the European elections, we can link all those in with issues that lie at the heart of the European Union. So we can talk about fairness and justice. Because as British people and British citizens, we know and understand fairness and justice because we have fought for fairness and justice. We can talk about law and order because I believe our police service is the greatest in the world. We can talk about professionalism within, look, we, we, in, in our police service. We can talk about what we believe um, will work for this country. Um, the PCC elections that we, the, the PPC elections that were only just a year ago now, um, gave us a perfect platform. The first time ever that we were able to talk about our law and order policy, and people really understand that. They know that about us now, and it resonates with people. People like what we have to say on law and order. They want to see a British Bill of Rights. They want UKIP in power so that we can scrap the European uh, Bill of Rights, which is nothing more, as I'm sure you all agree, than a criminal's charter. 
We can replace that with a British Bill of Rights. We can make sure that our police service target low-level signature crime. We can be there to support the weak and the vulnerable in our community. We can ensure that sentences mean what they say. That we stand for the victim and not the criminal. All these domestic policies are at the heart of what we believe and they go right back to the heart of Europe. Education. The greatest gift we can give to our children, which has been taken away from working class children, is an academic selective education. So we're going to stand for that. We're going to stand for that and talk about that leading up to the European elections. It's a domestic issue, but at every opportunity we're going to put our domestic policies out there and link them right back to the European Union and let people see what they're trying to take away from us. Let them know that what we stand for is a small state. A state where local people have their say. Local referenda, where if 5% of the population disagree with something, well, we can have a referendum and we can stop that appalling planning application, whether that be a new housing estate or whether that be some obnoxious wind turbines. We will give people their say because in UKIP that's what it's all about. We are a democratic party. We have justice and fairness at the heart of everything we do. We believe in low taxation. We believe in flat tax. We believe in a system which takes those on minimum wage out of tax and insurance altogether. We want to support the vulnerable, those that have paid into the system in their times of need. We're going to be there for them. But what we're not going to be there for is benefit tourists and immigrants who come over here to milk the system dry. And aren't every other political party now trying to jump on the UKIP bandwagon? Goodness they're stealing our policies. <coughs> We had this week the report saying that what they wanted was to see police and crime commissioners abolished and instead they wanted to see locally elected police boards. And what was in our 2010 manifesto? Locally elected police boards. Everything we do, every idea that at first they poo poo, the Lib Lab Con tell us how ridiculous we are, we're fruitcakes, we're loons, we're gadflies. By golly, a few, a few years down the line, they're all jumping on board and taking all those policies for themselves. <clears throat> so we've now come of age, haven't we, as a political party? And I think this European election is going to be the thing that really launches us into the stratosphere. Because we will win in May. We will win. Um, I'm expecting to get three MEPs here in the North West. Um, I, I expect myself, Paul, and Stephen Wolfe to be uh, returned as MEPs for the North West. And goodness, how exciting that would be. Can you imagine what we can do if we have those resources at our disposal? It would transform this region and what we could do for the people of this region. And when you're going out and when you're talking to people, I want you to push this European election and make people see that this is the referendum that they will never get with any other party. Use the European election on May the 22nd as the referendum that will never be. Let us send a message to everybody in Westminster that they trust us on the European issue and us alone. Because what will happen in May is that we will return, I believe, thousands of council uh, councillors to our council chambers. And that, in a way, is going to be more important. Because when people trust us as at local government level, and we send all those councillors back flooding into our council chambers, then we can really send a message home to, to everybody through their daily lives that we are here to stay, that we're not a protest party, you vote for UKIP, UKIP's what you're going to get. And what a brilliant basis, what a fantastic foundation that is going to be for 2015. Now we've gone through it, haven't we? That, you know, the last few months in this region, there's been lots of changes. Lots of things have happened. We had the MEP selection process and all those things that that threw up. We, you know, Fred, um, who has been utterly fantastic for so many years, um, had to leave, which was very sad. So lots of, lots of changes. But what we can do is look on all these changes as an opportunity. We can look at an opportunity for us all, for us all to pull together and work together. Because I believe what is really special about UKIP is the people like you sitting in this room. It's the volunteers. 
Now I'm a volunteer like all of you and I know that our grassroots activists, the people who pound the pavements, post the leaflets, stand on the street stalls, we wouldn't be anywhere without you because you are the lifeblood, volunteers are the lifeblood of this party and certainly when I sit in NEC meetings and things like that, the one thing that I like when I'm in those meetings is the fact that over and over again the decisions we make and the things that we talk about are driven by the things we hear from our grassroots volunteers and I think that makes us unique amongst any political party because we respect the volunteers because without you it wouldn't work so I'm going to ask everybody in the region now over the forthcoming months all of us to pull together, all of us to work together and have one push heading towards those Euro the European elections on May the 22nd. Because what we can create is a political whirlwind on May the 22nd. When we win, when we return more MEPs to Brussels than any other political party in this country, then we put down a marker. And that marker means that we're in 2015, with a general election, there is no way that Nigel Farage will be kept off those leadership debates. And if you think that Clegmania was something in the last general election in 2010, can you imagine Farage mania when people see what he can do? And I tell you what, Miliband, Clegg and Cameron are not going to, there's no way that they're going to stand up to Nigel. He will make mince me of them. They know it. They absolutely know it. And that's why they're so scared. This is why we have to pull together. We have to get Nigel on those leadership contests. We do that by winning in May. We can do it together. I'm going to dedicate the next few months to going round to branches across the region, trying to help in any way I can. Because I respect all of you here. I respect all. The, I respect all the membership we have here in the northwest. I think we're the, we're the fastest growing region in the country. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. Excuse me, but we, we can't let go of that. We can't kind of. We can't sit back on our laurels. We need to push it even further. Push further to May twenty second. <coughs> because when we do win, that is when we can make a real difference. And I believe that when we win on May 22nd, then we can go about the business of putting the great back into Britain. What do you say, folks? Are you up for it? Absolutely. Well, I'm going to open the floor up to any questions. Thank you.